Fate is like a strange, unpopular restaurant filled with odd little waiters who bring you things that you never asked for and you don't always like. Life ultimately is what happens to us whilst we're making other plans. And if we remain too rigid and fixed in our plans, then life and fate is the thing that comes along and breaks us. Whereas if we learn to bend and go with the flow, we may have a chance of at least getting somewhere. Hello and welcome to the Growth Mindset Podcast. Today I'm talking about a concept called disaster zones and being able to make space and bend with the will of the world and actually deal with chaos that happens in your lives rather than having it break you. Ultimately, time is going to do its thing and the importance of working with it is just undeniable. But trying to work with time can be really hard when fate throws funny things at you. And I've had some of my own share of lateness lately, so I thought I'd just recount three different completely separate stories that have got me pondering life, the universe, and existential disasters. Firstly, four weeks ago, I was driving home from a hospital visit and I found myself in a very large queue and it was clear that this queue was just going nowhere. So after five minutes, I kind of got out my car and started walking up the queue to see what was going on. This is in the countryside where like there aren't many other options of what to do with your car. As I got further up the line, I could see two cars had been in quite a big crash. It clearly had been a while ago because there were many people around the accident site and I personally used to be a lifeguard so I thought as I spent like five years being trained on health and safety and just emergency CPR on the just in case basis that no one else there knew how to do resuscitation that I should probably just go and ask if anyone needed help. I've done this a few times before in my life and like no one's ever needed me before because there's usually someone that's more qualified than me. I got there and timidly was like, oh, does anybody know how to do CPR or anybody trained? And nobody had a clue how to do first aid or what was going on. And I suddenly found myself the most qualified person at the scene with five people involved in a crash. Luckily, three of them were completely fine. And so I didn't have to do that much about them. One girl had some bruises and a concussion and she needed to lie down and to be kept warm whilst the ambulances were on their way to uh, get some like checks just to check if nothing else had gone wrong. Sadly, though, the final lady had not worn her seatbelt. She was unconscious with some large visible wounds on her head and blood kind of seeping from her airways and was just clearly in like a lot of pain. Luckily, after checking, it seemed that like nothing was actually broken and like her heart and breathing were stable and working. And so my actual biggest issue really became keeping her very distressed husband calm who was kind of trying to grab her and do things that weren't really helping someone that was in lots of pain. He was having an emotional meltdown and I'm just there like, <laughs> trying to reassure him that his wife will not die whilst waiting for the ambulances and someone that's actually trained to deal with these things could arrive. And 15 minutes later, the emergency services did arrive, conveniently rendering me useless so I could then bumble on home, which was nice. What was just funny was that I thought I was going to have a very normal drive home for dinner and actually what I got was an hour of complete chaos that I had not imagined at all. Sure, my evening plans had been wiped out and I missed my dinner, but also I just found myself seeing other people's lives in like way more in this, of a disaster than mine was and just contemplating the shortness of life, the absolute importance of wearing a seatbelt, which you must always do, by the way, and then just the fear and sadness gripping this man of potentially watching his loved ones die with like the powerless nature of a child. Just realizing how unexpected and unable we are to deal with problems and chaos. So that's story one. Two more stories. A bit shorter, perhaps. Second one was looking around a flat, this was a few months ago, with a estate agent who just did some expecting of the fireplace. She made a bit of a weird noise, didn't really know what she was saying, stood up and then just inelegantly collapses. She didn't really know why. She didn't like pass out, like her legs went to jelly. And she just lost control of her body, basically. Had no clue why. And called the ambulance. This was in the middle of nowhere again. And they were going to take eight hours because she didn't seem to be having a stroke or a heart attack and had a body that became useless for some strange reason. And ultimately had to drive her to the hospital. I vividly remember a few things that she said. Firstly, she was very British and was like, I'm so sorry for causing such a fuss. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. And then secondly, she said, I don't have time for this shit. I'm just too independent to like have someone else deal with me. And she was just really concerned about like not being able to carry on living her life. And ultimately, if your body fails on you, like 
you don't have much choice as in you can't not adapt to what's happening to you. You just have to like deal with life as it is. If you break a limb, you have to deal with a broken limb, etc. And it's not things that you necessarily want. But again, had me pondering the shortness of life, also the woefully inadequate ambulance services in the countryside, and just the fear of watching your plans for like your next month just melt away in front of you, realizing that you have absolutely zero control of your fate and that fate does not care at all what you want. That was story number two. Story number three. Now, this isn't a thing that I actually remember happening. It was when I was a toddler, but my mum told me this story the other day which is, I think was my favorite of these stories. After my mum had been on pregnancy leave after having me and I was like one year old or something, she was about to become a teacher again and she had some lesson plans to do after a few years of not teaching because she had like my sister and then me and then like a sabbatical to go to Australia. And so she'd had like four years off teaching and was about to get back to it. But anyway, summer had been flying by with kids and social lives and her lesson plans were still not quite planned. So she'd scheduled for a few days for my sister and I to go and play at a good friend of hers house who also had a toddler. And finally, after she just dropped us off at her friend's Emma's house, she had the space and time to get her lessons back on track before she started teaching again. But while she was preparing to take us there, she received a call from a doctor who was at Emma's house. He'd been called there for an emergency and he said that he needed my mum to go over there immediately and collect Emma's children, which is the opposite of what my mum was expecting. It turns out there was something wrong with Emma's brain and Emma needed to go to the hospital straight away and the kids needed to be looked after. So the doctor immediately was like, well, there's a lady coming to drop her kids off here. She clearly knows Emma and the kids so she can just look after these kids instead. So my mum suddenly got dumped with some kids whilst Emma was in hospital. And instead of planning school lessons, he ended up with a house full of kids and then a friend in an emergency hospital. Now, really sadly, in the hours of the early morning, Emma died from her brain tumor, it turns out. And the doctor called my mum to tell her the news. But Emma's husband had instructed my mum that she could not tell Emma's children or us. So my mum was now there super hours in the early morning, finding out that she has a dead friend and a bunch of kids to entertain that she can't tell whose mum has died. And she's just, just like, oh my God. <laughs> and eventually later in that evening, the next day, the kids were collected. In this chaos, like no one really thought about my mum as far as like follow-up support or if she actually had anything. So normally though, if your own family member dies or something, you get like some time off work. But my mum kind of just fell into this middle of nowhere of like this woman that just got dumped with some kids whose mum had just died and then looked after them whilst she was trying to get her own life on track. So my mom had to start teaching the next week and she'd done no preparation for the lessons. She was unable to sleep because of the combination of like trauma and panic of what was going on at work and with her friend dying and looking after her friend's kids. This turned into some of the most difficult weeks in my mom's life. But the residing lesson that my mom had from this was that she'll never leave an important thing until the last minute anymore. But she had such an overwhelmingly negative experience that it now means she hates the feeling of ever getting caught unaware by anything and will always get important things done early so that she has space for chaos. It just makes room for potential disasters in her life to happen without them messing up her own important plans. And that is the ultimate lesson from all of these three things is that we do need space and time for disasters because they do just happen when we don't expect them. And they can really cause a problem when there is no buffer zone to deal with them, when we have no capacity to bend. And like I said, time will do its thing and time is the ultimate healer, but we don't plan to use time for dealing with disasters or any associated recovery that might be needed. And so suddenly there's this whole extra bunch of time that's needed for something that we just never expected to use it for. We generally only allot our use of time in our heads for like, busy plans and doing useful stuff and we still don't have enough time to go around with fitting all our plans in, let alone when fate comes along and messes things up and just sprawls all over your expectations and time just gets used how it wants to be used regardless of your own volition. So instead of fighting time, it's often better to go with the flow. Now that means making space for some time or having it taken off us. I've spoken on the show before about the importance about trying to become friends with time but then that raises the question of how do we invite Mr. Time in when all he wants to do is just take over everything and mess things up. Now, if you think about it, time can actually be a bit like a naughty toddler. If you place it in a safe room, where there's nothing dangerous and it can't break anything. 
then it's not going to cause as much damage. But do you have a room to put time in when it wants to be a dick? Now, if you look at an analogy of physical spaces, if I look at my own physical room, I, I might have like a big clear out, let's say, but if I still don't have places to put everything in the long term, I still just won't ever have space for just like daily things to go somewhere. So they'll end up on the floor or on the bed or on the desk. That's because I have nowhere specific to put them. And it's the same like in my parents' house, they have like a spare room, which is great for guests and visitors, but actually that kind of becomes the dumping room for like stuff that there isn't like a dumping room for. And so like this room is usually not that usable unless they kind of have like a moment of panic and like clean it all and put it somewhere else. And ultimately, like, you just need a physical space in your life to put crap because there always will be physical crap in your life on a day-to-day -day basis. And if there's no space for it, you end up with a mess. Now, it's up to us, but we can choose the physical space to use for that mess before it just gets chosen for us with the most convenient place that might be in the way. And it's the same with time-consuming crap in your life. If you don't plan a time space for the actual mess of time to, like, be put, then it will make a mess of the rest of your life. So you can actually choose what bits of time space get taken or it can get chosen for you. So these stories, I think, were a really good reminder that just life is really short and we want to plan to use as much of our time as possible to make the most of things and have as much fun and like be productive, be loving, have holidays, do all the fun stuff. But ironically, actually trying to fit too much into our time can actually cause us more problems. And by planning some dead time and some space and having room for unplanned chaos and mess that arises, that way we can actually make sure we genuinely do do the things that we want to do and that they won't get sacrificed without our own say and allow us to bend around the issues of time and still get the things done that we want to do. And by the way, time is really short. Besides those stories that I just mentioned, I've had a good friend end up in a car crash and end up in a coma. Another friend died on a bus from a heart attack who's my age, like that's 32. And my uncle has been diagnosed with two large tumours. And shit just happens and people die and it's not cool. And things can just turn up in your life that you might not be prepared to deal with. But you can really preempt some of it by just being a little bit more chilled out and having space. On that note, firstly, just be nice to everyone and also look after yourself because you might as well. Secondly, always wear a seatbelt. There's no reason to not wear a seatbelt. If anybody from this podcast dies because of not wearing a seatbelt, then I'll be frustrated. Thirdly, prioritize the things that matter and make the most of every day that you have and that you're blessed with because you may as well just be grateful for the time that you have and the people that you get to share time with because there's no time to be angry and annoyed and frustrated. It's not worth it. So on that note, don't wait for a better time or a more convenient time to do important things. Try and do them as early as possible because it's never going to get easier. It could get a lot harder and it might never even happen. So if it's important to you, do it. There's always going to be some form of crap or other in the way and you need to have a place to put your crap so you can get on with your life. Now, thank you very much for listening and remember that life is about enjoying yourself and that starts with today enjoying today, being kind to yourself today, and whilst you're at it, be kind to someone else too.